This is MIA 2K Podcast, and we are your ticket from Miami to Seoul. We are your pilots, Kathy and Laura, two fun-seeking girls with obsessive fandom tendencies, taking you on a ride through the Hallyu wave from our perspective as opinionated, grown Latina fans from Miami. Before we close the cabin doors, make sure you're following us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you like to watch, our in-flight podcast video is available on YouTube and Spotify. Once we reach our cruising altitude, we'll be serving one thing and one thing only, piping hot tea. We're ready to fly into today's topic with our hot and sunny takes. So fasten your seatbelts, sit back, relax, and prepare for takeoff. Hi, guys. Hello. This week, we're coming at you with the third episode of our company-specific series, where we deep dive into South Korea's top entertainment agencies. We want to remind you that some of these episodes might deal with delicate subjects like child labor, body autonomy, grooming, personal freedom, disorderly eating, body dysmorphia, and a lot of other serious and potential dark topics. So please be alert to our content warnings and description boxes for timestamps to skip a section. And with that, today we're going to focus on the behemoth. <laughs> That is hype. Listen, yeah. I want to say real quick, <laughs> we've been doing research for weeks, days, years. It's a lot. Like we try to summarize this because it's so much information, but we feel like we condensed it as much as possible into like the really important stuff so that you can get to know our point of view about hype. So we hope that you find this episode informative, educational, and resourceful. And because Hybe is such a big corporation, if you want us to cover something else or something more specific, please let us know. Mm -hmm. Send us a DM, tweet at us, whatever you want. Leave a and, comment. Yeah. And we'll we'll see what we can do. This is it's huge. And we were we did our best to kind of split the sections in the same way that we did it for JYP and for YG, but it was kind of hard because Hybe did not become Hybe in the same way that the other companies became right they are so we'll let you know how the sections are a little bit different today so and for those not watching my background today is gin i miss them so much salutes okay so as with all the other companies before we start we just want to touch on a little bit of history on the company so hybe actually started as big hit entertainment and it was founded in 2005 by bang C. Hyuk, probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry, Bang PD. We will call him Bang PD, Bang, Chairman Bang. Hitman Bang. But probably not his government name. Probably not. Like I said, it was originally Big Hit Entertainment and it was rebranded and restructured in March 2021. And we'll talk about that later. It is currently the home to one soloist and two boy groups. The current CEO is Shing Young J. So Big Hit's first artist was a vocal trio, Eight, and they debuted in 2007. It was followed by 2AM through a joint management contract with JYP. In 2007, the company nearly went bankrupt and it was actually saved by the success of 8 and 2 a.m. In 2015, which I found this fact kind of interesting, mm. in 2015, a company called Signal Entertainment bought Big Hit through a convertible bond. And from what I understood, convertible bonds mean that when Big Hit gained capital or like when they became a little bit more profitable, they could essentially buy back the company from Signal Entertainment. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. They did this within the year. So I think the 2015 was a pretty big pivotal moment for BTS to become what it is. Mm -hmm. So I think this helped Big Hit continue to develop BTS, right? Big Hit is considered a pioneer in embracing social media and digital platforms forms to connect the fans with their artist which if you know a little bit about hype you know that makes a lot of sense so mm -hmm. so as laura mentioned earlier big hit was founded by whom we're gonna call bang pd hit bang bang all the bangs bang 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 wrong company okay so <laughs> Bang Shi Hyuk, also known as Hit Bang Bang, graduated from Seoul National University, where he studied aesthetics. He debuted as a composer and a writer. 
He participated in this contest in 1997 called the Yu Jeha Music Contest, and he got third place. And from that, his demo ended up in JYP's desk somehow. And then they became besties because JYP was like, wow, this dude sounds like super international, which like, you know, what the fuck? Because when JB was trying to sound international, that there was a problem. <laughs> but when Van PD did it, it was cool. So what is it, homie? Anyway, that's a callback to our JYP episode and my anger in that regard. Once they started working together, actually in 2019, JYP said that 20 years ago, the company only had three employees himself, Bank PD, and someone in accounting. So that's how JYP started, guys. If you need any inspiration to start from the bottom and aim high, there you go. So or to be an accountant. Or, yeah, you know, like that TikTok <laughs> about being an accountant, <laughs> but you're not an accountant, actually. That's the one that I like to do. <laughs> so while working together, they produce a ton of really good music, most notably when they did G.O.D.'s Friday Night. That's the song that earned Hitman Bang the title of Hitman Bang because it just became clear that he was really good at producing music. And random side note, found an article talking about how JYP and Bang PD were roomies for like a year. They were living in LA at someone's like house that JYP knew sharing like a room and it was really tough for them to live together and uh, JYP is one year older than Bang PD. So because of the whole young dynamics and stuff, Bank PD was in charge of the laundry. And again, their dynamics were really interesting. So that was a random story that I found that I was like, wow, they really were like a lot closer. You know, living together in a room brings you very close to someone very quickly. Yeah. So as Laura said, in 2005, Hitman Bang formally founded Big Hit Entertainment and said to his bestie, JYP, thanks for the opportunities. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for all the things that I learned from you. I'm going to go start on my own. And then in 2010, JYP Entertainment entrusted the management of the artist 2AM to Big Hit Entertainment. So they basically were co-managing 2AM, which Laura named earlier. And then in 2010, you know, minor little event, Bang She Hook began putting together the Bulletproof Boy Scouts which is a group that was meant to emulate one time, which is a group from YG. And you can also learn more about them a little bit in our YG episode. And it was all centered around a brilliant kid whom at the time was going around the underground hip hop scene as Runch Ronda. And his name is Kim Nam Joon. You may or may not have heard about him. So as of maybe the last year or two, I want to say 2021, Bang PD has gotten a lot of notoriety outside of South Korea. So I think just recently in like March, he uh, was given or awarded the Billboard Visionary Award. Mm. And actually, it was his bestie, Scooter Braun, who presented the award to him. And there has been countless articles written about him in the last couple of years, too, from more Western type publications like Time and Variety and stuff like that. Yeah. So he's definitely becoming not just big in South Korea because he's been big for a little bit, yeah. but also internationally. Yeah. Fun fact, when we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second, but when once he took Big Hit and made it public, he became a billionaire. He's number 16 in the ranking in South Korea. He's like 1,700 in the worldwide ranking of billionaires. So fun facts. So we're going to get into the groups that have been part and are part of Big Hit Entertainment. We'll try to run through them quickly. We do have some more detail than we had in prior episodes just because big hit is big hit so as laura mentioned earlier eight is the first group that was signed to big hit which it had three members Baek chan lee hyun and juhi it was co-managed between big hit entertainment and source music you're going to hear a lot about source music throughout this episode so just keep them in mind and their contracts ended in 2014 so the group became quote-unquote temporarily disbanded but they reunited in 2020 and dropped two songs called fool again and without a heart which without a heart is the it was a 10 anniversary version of that song that they had dropped 10 years before so if you are army Ehyun in the group is the Ehyun that you guys all know solo perfect ballad singing dude who is always around big hit and whom bts and txt love so much as their young some may name so we're gonna talk about Ehyun right now he debuted in 2007 as a member of the co-ed group that we just mentioned eight he was also a member of another disbanded vocal duo called Om, which is men in French. He did that with Changmen of 2AM. And they were together from 2010 to 2018. He is currently signed to Big Hit Music as a solo artist. And he recently introduced his alter ego, Midna, in March through the release of the single Masquerade. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the episode. And then 2AM was also part of Big Hit. It was the brother 
group of 2 p.m., which as a whole made a big group called One Day. Mm -hmm. It was uh, with a joint management contract with JYP Entertainment. They mostly performed ballads compared to 2 p.m. That was all about like the acrobatics and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they went into hiatus in 2015 when three out of the five members decided to leave JYP. Mm -hmm. They did have a comeback recently in 2021. And as a note, Joe Kwan, which is one of the members and the leader, is breaking stereotypes, being his fabulous self. He has actually done a musical, I think it is, where he is in drag, which is groundbreaking for Korea. And Bang PD gifted him his first pair of heels. So after 2 a.m., we go into glam. We're going to share the tea on them later. We're just going to share the basics right now. So they were a five-member hip-hop inspired girl group that debuted in 2012 with a single party. And fun fact for ARMY, J-Hope, Suga, Jimin, and Jungkook actually were backup dancers for a performance that they did for an act called See You, which actually was the first Vocaloid in K-pop. So guess what, Espa? You were not the first. I'm just kidding. Uh, Espo has a whole different concept, but just <laughs> I thought it was very interesting. I saw a couple of the videos and they were dancing next to the screen with the Vocaloid and she was following the choreo. So I was like, oh, look at that. All the way back in 2012, 2013, what this was happening. And then five months after debuting, one of their members named Trinity left the group for personal reasons. We'll get into those reasons later. And then they disbanded in 2014. And we'll also discuss more on that in a second and one of the things that like jumped out at me when i was looking into glam there's this picture that is online of them in some presentation it is literally the girl version of bts circa their first song what yeah, is it 2013 called? no more dream yeah when no they more dream like <laughs> sugar's little like like the, yeah, bandana yeah, yeah, thing yeah. the styling is so so similar so after glam we get into bts now there's no reason to sit here and talk three hours about bts i can but i won't because on this episode will never end what I thought was interesting to mention about BTS in this specific episode is how they were formed, which is basically RM started doing hip hop around sixth grade, was in a rap group, and then went to a specific audition where he performed for this producer named Sleepy. And then Sleepy handed his information to Bang PD and was like, hey, you should check out this kid. And then in 2010, Bang PD and RM met and Bang PD basically built BTS around RM. So all the members who came later and in the order it was Suga, J-Hope, Jungkook, and Jin were on the same. They said that they signed the contract on the same day. Then V and then Jimin. That's how BTS was formed. And if you want more history and all that stuff on, on BTS, let us know. And uh, yeah, that's what I'll share about them. So after BTS came TXT. They're the only other group that is signed to Big Hit Entertainment. They started training them around 2015. The name Tomorrow by Together refers to five individuals who come together under one dream in hopes of building a better tomorrow. They debuted on March 4th on, of 2019. And Laura's laughing with the name. I'm laughing with the name as well. Also because I've never understood why Moa is named Moa. And before any Moa come for us, <laughs> listen, we are Moas. Laura is a Subin stan. I love Yeonjun. I have this running joke that I gave birth to Bumyu. He's my son. I can't explain it. And so we love TXT. Like genuinely freaking love them. But the whole like moments of alwaysness thing never really like, <laughs> like I really feel like they sat there one day in like a room and we're like, guys, what's the randomest thing we can call these people <laughs> just to see what we can get away with. And the thing is, recently I saw a, a fellow South Floridian, Moa, was actually sharing facts that like we might not know about because we weren't in the fandom at the time. And she was saying that actually when TXC debuted, the, the, we had a different fandom name at the time, which was Young Ones. But then, like, I guess Big Hit did not do their due diligence at the time. And they didn't realize that Tiffany from Girls' Generation had her fans called Young Ones as well. So Big Hit was like, oops, never mind, sorry. And then retracted and then, like, came back literally four or five months later. And you come back with moments of alwaysness. I just at have least questions. In English, I guess. I don't <laughs> know. I, Moa, to me, sounds like too close to moan. And it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I can take that. But anyway, that's always something that I have found kind of the Tomorrow by Together for the guys. It's, it was so hard for people to catch on with that name. And, you know, they hated kind of going by TXC for the longest time. Now they've kind of given into it. But it's just, you know, there's this video of Gary Vaynerchuk, the owner of Vayner Media, and 
he was sitting at a company meeting for a venture he was going to launch and they were like but what are we going to name it it's like it's important and he's like the name doesn't fucking matter it that's you know it's 1 37 p.m let's name the company that and literally named the company 1 37 p.m because that was the time on the clock and that's very much the energy that tomorrow by together our moments of alwaysness gives me it, it gives me trying to have like a cool english name it very much goes with the fact that they're song names are ridiculously long and just yeah. mm -hmm. it's giving shtick <laughs> instead of yeah instead of a you know like rational logical mm. sequence yeah. of events you know like i Agreed. like young ones Agreed. and it sucks that it didn't i i like the meaning behind the young ones and all that stuff and it sucks that it didn't work out but i don't think moa was the next best option honestly so anyway the way that they all started at big hit was very different they were all like highly sought out for the most part. Subin, the, his story is the funniest to me because he sent his audition tape and he was told like if he made it, they were going to call him in two weeks and they never called him. Like two months later, they finally reached out to him and he's like, why did you guys take so long to contact me? And they were like, you put your wrong number in the freaking form. <laughs> and then he, you know, became the leader of Tomorrow by Together, as you do. And yeah, the rest of the members have very sus stories about how <laughs> really much do. out of the way Big Hit went to get them. They really, really put this group together by not taking no for an answer and go and just like, oh, you have to go through the city seven times. I will go. I will go find them. I will ask their classmates for the number. I will convince their parents that this is a good idea. I will be like, hey, Sugar from Degu is uh, in BTS in the same company. Please let us take your son with us. Like, it was a lot. So TXC was meant to be, is all I have to say. They really were. Mm. And the fact that their personalities are so different, but somehow they work. Somehow, it, like, some way. It's literally just destiny, I guess. So finally, we're going to talk. It's not a group, but it was a possible group and it mm. is the shadiest weirdest thing i've well it's not the weirdest thing in k-pop because k-pop is weird yeah but it's it's a little weird if you guys are fans of bts or any of the big hit uh groups you know about trainee a so mm. what is trainee a trainee a was a pre-debut group that big hit put together mm. and they kind of introduced everyone in 2021 they created like social media accounts and everything. Executives from the company started following the accounts. They had a super massive following. They did. And then all of a sudden in December 2022, gone, like out of nowhere, like Oof. literally Oof. left field training ain't no more. And I believe we actually all found out because one of the members was like, oh, yeah, training isn't anymore. And like, bye. Because yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, maybe this means they're going to like debut. No, like it's out. right. And it's not because members left because throughout the two years that were that they were together as training a there were a couple members that left and like others were added and stuff. So there was like some fluidity within the members. And to this day, I tried to look for like a good reason and nobody knows. Matter of fact, people don't actually know which of the uh, trainees are still part of Big Hit. From what I could find, a lot of them actually aren't. There was this one trainee called Leo. He is Thai. He went back to Thailand and like debuted as a solo artist there. So like literally, what Chucky the hell? Cookie. Also, I had a potential son in this group, and I'm pretty upset. My my potential son is very talented. Mm. He already debuted as a solo artist, so he'll be okay. And this actually is a great segue into the scandals of Big Hit because I feel like this is like adjacent to a scandal because like what yeah. the fuck? People were super invested in this group. Like, they were. They created so much content and so much opportunities for fans to like fall in love with them and yeah. then like all of a sudden they took them away yeah so scandals in the other episodes we usually talk a little bit more about the scandals of the people behind the company because it's super apparent and super obvious that with south korean entertainment companies you can't really separate the person who founded the company and the company mm -hmm. either they don't 
make that distinction very early on or the company rides on that person for a lot of things, right? right? So with Big Hit or Hype, it's very much that. But he's a very different person than both JYP and YG the man. So because he's a very different person, the scandals aren't scandaling. I wasn't scandalized. Yeah, I don't know if he's just been really good about deleting anything regarding him aside from producing music and being in love with music mm. or he just really doesn't have any scandals at all he has been very careful to create this narrative around him this lore that he's all about the music before anything else and it's been pretty effective yeah what i've also noticed and maybe this is another reason why there's very different perception on bang compared to jyp and yg the man mm. their looks are very different so like jyp and yg try to look cool to look mm. and younger and try to have this image of like a cool older person yeah bang is just very much a nerdy man agreed agreed so yeah. he's not he's not ever trying to act like he's this cool super hip guy and yeah. i think that's also very much helped the perception like the public perception of him too i totally agree because when you see with yg and with jyp they always use their own selves as an example of what other people should do and you never really hear bank pd like boasting about his skills like recently because of the work that they did with uh, neil rogers on the la seraphim's album neil mentioned that bank pd is actually like a amazing guitarist and I don't think we it's something that people know very commonly. But again, it's one of those things that he keeps to himself. Also, mm -hmm. I think there's a, those like couple stories of he gifting Joe Kwon his first pair of heels. Yeah. He has a very like human understanding image to him from just stories that are shared about him. And like mm -hmm. you said, either he's really good at clearing up anything bad or I don't know. Those, yeah. Yeah. All of the articles that I read about him, like I mentioned, there's been a lot recently. Mm -hmm. They all always have the same type type of vibe mm -hmm. and it always has you know quotes from people that know him and everybody always agrees on the same thing that he's very humble mm -hmm. very thoughtful in his approach yeah to everything and mm -hmm. like it, it makes him a good mentor in a way so it's just interesting to see the very different ways of going about life even though all, all three have the same purpose to yeah. make their companies bigger and more powerful most scandals regarding bit hit don't actually revolve around like bank pd or the company they revolve around the artists themselves so in this section we're only going to talk about scandals pertaining to big hit music artist and not like the other labels that are part of the hype labels mm. Uh, it was really hard to find scandals, honestly, for this particular section. And either they've very pure or they've just bought people off. Could be a mixture of both. There's like rumors that like Hybe or Big Hit like has a deal with Dispatch and like this and this and that. But like nothing's we'll ever know. confirmed. We'll never know. Mm. I The scandal that I found that kind of sh shook shook me to the core was a black mailing scandal that big hit was involved in this was the only scandal that actually involved the company so big hit contracted a marketing company to do some work for them the owner or ceo of this company later after the contract was done and executed like completed fell into bad times and when that happened he went to big hit employees and sort of blackmailed them saying that if they didn't give him money he would reveal illegal marketing tactics that big hit used to put their artists better at this point it was 2016 or like it was after 2016 and a lot of people thought they were talking about bts winning an award i think it was like a fan award which i guess could be easily like faked or whatever in the end it was found out that big hit as soon as they found out that this was happening reported this person to the authorities he was caught and jailed for blackmail mm. and it was an employee that transferred money to the ceo without letting the company know that this was happening so he was just trying to make it better for the artist which at this point it was only bts mm. 
And Big Hit was like, you dumbass, like, no, that's not the proper way to deal with this. So we still don't really know what those documents were, if they existed, if they're real. It's all just kind of secret or alleged. When I was looking into scandals, it seems in Korea that even if you did something illegal or bad, if someone blackmails you using that information, the blackmail is worse than the crime. Right. I don't know if that happens here because, again, law, I don't know. No, two wrongs don't make a right. I feel like here you both would get prosecuted, which (laughs) leads us to one of uh, Big Hit's biggest scandal back in the day and it is with (laughs) their girl group glam that we mentioned earlier so as we said they started out as five girls five months in they lost one girl her name was trinity and at the time and to this day they said that she was leaving for personal reasons but there's been a couple of reports allegations never confirmed that maybe just maybe she was assassinating for super juniors lee took so allegations Yeah, very random. And then after that, you know, she this girl left around early 2013. And then in 2014, actor Lee Byung-hun, and he is known for his works in Mr. Sunshine, Squid Game, I Saw the Devil, Our Blues, and many, many more because he's very talented, very sought after. He went to the police with the accusation that he was being blackmailed and extorted by two women. One of them happened to be Glam Stahi. And Allegedly, she had video of him either talking dirty, engaging in some intimate acts with them while his wife was fully pregnant. So she, they were blackmailing and, him. It was her and a model, and they were blackmailing him for mm-hmm. a 5 million won, I believe. And actually, in some of the research I found, I says that the, the video, like, he was actually doing inappropriate things, which... Again, yeah, but it, just cheating on his wife is not a crime. So right, obviously right, the blackmail right, right. is That's the true. actual crime here. That's so, true. but yeah, obviously he's just disgusting. Like as a as a woman, <laughs> you just feel like you're gross. But he didn't actually commit a crime. The right, right. the girls That's did. True. So when when she was accused by him and she was, you know, they did a whole investigation. She was found to be guilty. She was sentenced to jail. Which then later they were like, just kidding, you can do probation. And then at that point, Big Hit was like, you know what? We're just going to disband these girls and we're going to call it a day on Glam. Bye bye. That's it. Bye, ladies. And it's rumored like that at that point, Bank PD said no more girl groups, no more fucking girl groups. And you know what? I don't blame him. (laughs) At, like not even a little bit they actually say or like by the i mean malas lenguas, the chismosos the gossipers the people that are out there mm. uh, they say that part of the reason why big hit and bang was able to give bts their whole attention was because this happened if they had not disbanded they wouldn't have been the only group that Big Hit had at that time. So the attention would have been split and maybe, just maybe, everything could have been different, Mm. which is crazy, isn't it? All the things are crazy. I actually, I mean, I forgot to mention it's in the BTS section that BTS did their debut showcase because someone else dropped out. Like another uh, idol group that was scheduled to do their their number or their comeback dropped out. So BTS got that, that spot. And it looks like so many things of what helped BTS become BTS were pure luck or just, you know, things that happen in life that you can't replicate, which is why when Bang PD is asked, can you make another BTS? He's like, no, we can make another right. su- successful group. We can make another chart topping group, but not BTS because there were right. too many things that is just like the stars aligned and Crazy. it is you can't re- recreate that magic ever again. So at least not on purpose. So. And if you guys are wondering what Dahi is up to right now, <laughs> she changed her name. <laughs> yes, she did. And is now a successful streamer, apparently. So there's yeah. that. <laughs> they say she makes like 200000 a month. So must be nice. Must be nice. Aside from Glam, BTS has had a couple of scandals. And they're not really scandals. They're just kind of like a little like pepper instead of like sriracha. <laughs> In terms of spiciness level. <laughs> <laughs> so one is uh, Suga August D sampled a cult leader's voice in his song. What do you think? Part of D2. It was uh, Jim Jones. Mm. He had a cult in like South America 
a lot of people died bad things um and it was solved pretty quickly sugar apologized he didn't realize that this little bit of spoken word that he took was part of this horrible person and then this isn't even a scandal this is more people being ridiculous uh rm and jimin have both been targets of death threats again not a scandal but just things that have happened to people or groups within big hit i also wanted to mention we will probably be using big hit and hype and all of these names interchangeably but they all mean the same company Mm. for anyone out there even though we know that there is a distinction between Mm -hmm. hype corporation and all of the other labels underneath them and that's a great segue to close out the section on big hit and now we're going to move on to section Mm -hmm. two of our very deep deep dive and this section is about how big hit became hype and we're going to say that this is mostly around things that happened between 2019 and 2022 Although some things happen a little bit earlier and a little bit after, Mm -hmm. but this is kind of like a key time period for Big Hit's explosion into the hype that we know today. So how did Big Hit become hype? They basically have have had this strategy of expanding to other areas of entertainment, sort of like YG and JYP have done. Mm -hmm. They're not just doing k-pop or like idol groups Mm -hmm. solo artists but they're also expanding into technologies video games pretty much everything and anything yeah successfully honestly they also became hype by acquiring other labels they created a system where hype is the roof and then underneath holding up the roof are other labels with artist Mm. that already existed because they mostly bought out or acquired other labels that had Mm. already groups existing and those are like the pillars or the columns holding the roof and another thing that they're doing most more recently is expanding the use of their intellectual property and what this means is this is why you see bts branded toilet paper water band-aids I don't think there's toilet paper. I'm just saying, but like hey. this is their way of using what they have and making more money out of it. So part of this whole program was using music that they already have rights to because of their groups in video games, using their groups in webtoons and stuff like NFTs too. So, so as Laura mentioned, one of the key areas that Big Hit went into all in to become hive or as part of one of their pillars to becoming hive is technology so the biggest and most notable piece of technology that they have obviously is weverse so weverse if you are not familiar with it is a south korean mobile app and web platform created by big hit now hive corporation the app specializes in hosting multimedia content and artists to fan communications for musicians. So basically, you can write posts within the community. You can send fan letters or pictures to artists or videos to. You can participate in events like raffles and join as many or as little communities as you want. FYI, after BTS and then TXT, now Weverse is up to 96 acts, like 96 different artists, communities who use the platform to engage with their fans including K-pop groups, solo artists, my queen Lehigh, love her, she's on Weverse. And uh, more recently, there's been some Western acts added, like Max was besties with BTS, Jeremy Zucker, Gracie Abrams, New Hope Club, who's been hanging out with all the K-pop groups and making music with P1 Harmony and Ish, Alexander23, and of course, can't forget Lil Huddy, also on <laughs> Weverse. Do you remember when we felt that? I remember Weverse. <laughs> very clearly. I And you know what? When I was doing the research and I saw his name, I was like, I completely blocked this out of my brain because I feel like it was like a negative memory when Lil Huddy started his community because it was like what in the actual fuck is happening right now the only reason why it's always present in my mind is there's been a lot of artists that have gotten a Weaver's community open recently Mm. so I just like to be in the know and see who has and every time I scroll his name appears and I'm like it's just such a mind fuck. But I will I, say, yeah, no, that I'm just here waiting for Chayanne Opa's Weavers to open. Honestly, I joined that. That's all I want. <laughs> that's really all I want. Kim Chayanne. 
<laughs> that's a tiktok okay. i didn't that's not my joke so i i saw a tiktok and i'm still not recovered from it and i saw it like three weeks ago it was really good it's so funny kim chayang <laughs> if you're latina the girls who get it get it so if you're a k-poppy an old k-poppy or a semi old k-poppy or just not from 2021 and recent beyond you know about an app called V Live. V Live used to be an app where you could, it, it was pretty much like Weavers. There was fan communities, lives from artists. The companies would put out content there um, aside from like their YouTube channel and all that stuff. Yeah. It was owned by Naver. And the Which reason is the why, Google of Korea. Yeah. So the reason why V Live is no more is because actually back in 2021, Naver invested heavily in BNX slash Weavers. It, the original name was VNX and then it became Weavers Companies, acquiring about 49% of the company. And if there's something that I learned is you can't compete with yourself. Mm. So in turn for investment in this partnership or whatever, they transferred VLive to Weavers, which means VLive was no more. Because it, it's pretty much Weavers replicated, I guess, in a way, what V Live. Yeah, did they absorb their their engineering tech and right. were able to build everything into one platform at Weavers. Right. What V Live was doing, and uh, the reason why they were allowed to merge or to do this was because the Korean Fair Trade Committee said that there were other competitor apps. I'm guessing like bubble and universe and so by joining these two big companies they weren't creating a monopoly on like fan communications and stuff that ftc is gonna be like girl that decision did not age well did it mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. honestly more on that later <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and one of the big things or one of the uh big goals of hype in the recent years is to monetize fan artist interactions. V Live, for the most part, was a pretty much free platform. Weavers used to be mostly free, but now that changed a little bit. And with trying to monetize fan artist interactions, they have actually expanded Weavers to include Weavers DM, which is like a messaging app, sort of like bubble is to jyp artist do they have implemented they have a currency totally. yeah. within weavers called jelly and they're also trying to add the concept of collecting badges within the app so fans can feel like they're fanning to their highest potential i guess not just that it, but it, it makes like a competition and it's like right, you're not enough right. of a fan if you don't have these badges like right. it's like fomo they're really using fomo is what right. they're doing yeah and for anyone who became a k-pop fan recently and didn't get to experience v live the biggest change that we've experienced as fans after v live went away is that in v live they used to have like fan made subtitles when people went live so that meant that, uh, let's say if Laura spoke Korean and she saw that Jungkook went live at four in the morning and she was up, she could start submitting her translation to VLive and then VLive would push it through and everything would be translated within like 24 hours unless it was like super long. And now with Weavers, when they have all the resources in the fucking world, they take like a week or more. They took at the beginning with the very first few lives that BTS had, it took like a month for it to be translated. Yeah which is literally inexcusable for that company with those funds. But whatever, I think, I don't know, because since I watch all the all the lives, like, uh, live, and I just catch the translations from our amazing translator accounts on Twitter, I don't go back and watch it again once it's been translated. So I don't know how long it takes them anymore, but I know it's not a day. I know it's still like a week. That's and the biggest some of the smaller Some of the smaller groups don't get translations at all. Yeah. I, was, I was going back into, I don't remember if it was the, the boys they're weavers and i couldn't like i was trying to look for a live just to waste time and i couldn't find any that had translations mm. that might have changed recently i'm not sure but it, it kind of sucks because it it was nice to have that though i understand why they would do this because this way they can create 
and control the narrative. Mm. There is no possibility of mistranslations because they're controlling everything. So it not makes just sense. that. It's another opportunity to monetize because we all saw that right. they have plans for Weavers Plus, which includes translations. So mm. they're just trying to make sure that they make our lives as fans as inconvenient as possible if we're not paying right. for our stuff. And aside from that, another thing that has really bothered me is there's artists that aren't part of Weavers and probably will not be part of Weavers for a while because they're part of other companies. Mm. For example, Stray Kids. 80s before i could find all of their lives conveniently in one place but now sometimes if they go live on instagram we rely on a fan to video capture it so we can mm -hmm. see it later i think youtube dubs have the rewatch option but yeah. like tiktok and instagram don't necessarily have it as easy no so for instagram the per, the artist would have to like save it and publish it for us to right. be able to watch it and on tiktok and it's TikTok just private too. to the account yeah so it sucks because it it stopped it's it made it much harder also i can't go back and reference a live that they did a couple of years ago unless a fan already uploaded it to youtube usually yeah. fans are very good at doing that yeah. even when be live was a thing but still like it just sucks yeah like every bts live and anything that they've done has been uploaded to every multiple websites that you can imagine but it's not the case for smaller groups which sucks. Yeah. yeah also mm. stay tuned because i will probably try weaver's dm i've been dying to do it oh yeah laura wants to do it as like a experiment mm -hmm. i am against it on principle but they still haven't activated for a law. It was, it's mm -hmm. like, they're starting with the smaller groups that can't get backlash mm -hmm. because they're so small, they're small that like they need the money. So no one's going to yeah. bitch. But I think like if they try to do Weaver's DM with BTS, no. shit will go down. So. I have recently gotten into Pentagon. And so they have Weaver's DM. Just want to see. <laughs> we'll there she goes with her jellies. <laughs> gonna go spend it. You go, girl. <laughs> You go, Glen Coco. <laughs> Aside from technology, there is also products. They, you know, they sell a service and they also sell products. To sell us their products, they have the Weaver Shop, which they opened originally only as an in-app experience. Now we have a website that we can also really? buy things to. Yeah. So remember mm -hmm. when they dropped the D-Day documentary and they were mm -hmm. saying that they were going to give the VOD gift, it actually wasn't showing up on my phone app and I had to do it through the web. Anyway, that's when I noticed that like Weaver Shop is now available on desktop. So it's oh. not just mobile anymore. The other thing that is worth mentioning about Weaver Shop is the shipping prices because... You know, I understand that after the pandemic and with all the supply chain issues and delays and things, and it's not just weavers that has faced a reason for increase, I'll say, but their rates were high to begin with because they are making money on shipping. Like you can't tell me that they're, that the money that they charge us is going entirely to shipping. No, like they're making money from us, from the shipping fees. So now it's truly astronomical. Like you can more than likely pay more on shipping than on an item itself if you're just buying one thing <laughs> which is fucking ridiculous again i had a, a free gift that was zero dollars and i paid 25 dollars on shipping it doesn't get any more like ridiculous than that so not only have they increased their shipping fees but now in the case of the u.s i don't know about the rest of the world but they stopped working with dhl and dhl is a global shipping management company that like has their shit together and does yeah, things really well and they are organized and they are responsible for packaging and packages and delivery and all that shit. Now in the U.S., they're working with the USPS, which not to get political, but for the past two years has been managed by someone who doesn't fucking know what's going on and has been trying to crash it just to make sure that UPS, FedEx and other companies can like rise to the top. And the USPS is literally actually tragic. Like yeah. I know there's a lot of good people that work at the USPS and I deal with them all the time. Thank you for but your service. Yeah, thank you for your service and sorry that you have like the shittiest federal job of all time. But honestly, the amount of army and people, I mean, I'm going to talk about army because that's who's using the Weaver shop and bitching about it there that are constantly on TikTok complaining about the amount of time that it takes to take a, to get a package, the damage to the packages because they're not being handled with care anymore. And then just Weavers in general, like the the department that accepts complaints, so like customer care department for Weavers orders is literal actual shit. 
Like people have videos of themselves unboxing things that they have bought from weavers where there's clearly items missing and they come back with, no, we have proof that we like package all the items. And the person's like, you literally have me unboxing it from scratch. How do you have proof that you put all the items in there? So things have just gone very bad with mm -hmm. Weaver's mm -hmm. shop and their shipping practices and all of that. Just another more predatory way in which they're trying to take our money. And the pricing of it all, the, the difference between global pricing versus USA pricing with the shipping fees for here and for there. And like sometimes you can cancel an order, sometimes you can't because they're trying to make money off of you. It's just disgusting. So... Yeah. Not happy okay. with Weaver's shop, period. I was trying to buy a trading card set for 17 and the trading card set itself was like eight bucks and shipping was like 20 or 30 something dollars. I saw it and I was like, no fucking way can I say this makes sense. Mm. It didn't. Yeah, it doesn't. And they weren't selling it in the US shop, mm. just global. Another way that they're changed their company in the last couple of years is they started a partnership with YG plus. We actually talked about this in our YG episode mm -hmm. and what YG plus does is they distribute products, albums. So Hybe currently owns about 17% of YG plus and YG plus in turn helps distribute Hybe artists, merch, mm -hmm. albums, all that stuff. And in return, the reason why there's YG artists and weavers is because of this. Yeah. YG Plus, to clarify, is a sub company of YG Entertainment. So, yes, right. it's the YG that you're thinking about. Also, another way in which Hybe is expanding to the freaking billionth degree that they can <laughs> is through Hybe EDU, which stands for education, obviously. So, Hybe. EDU is an edutech company that develops content for study by utilizing artists' IP and technology. They've been presenting Korean language study packages with video content such as Learn Korean with BTS and Learn Korean with Tiny Tan. Learn Korean with BTS is being used as a Korean language textbook at nine universities in seven countries, including the University of Sheffield in the UK, Middlebury College in the US, and EDHEC Business School in France. Hive EDU's learning content is distinctive in that it possesses high quality curriculum and strengthens the motivation of learning by utilizing the artist's IP and diversifying the user experience at the same time. So they're just, you know, monetizing something that they know is not necessarily needed, not a commodity, but it's like people want it. People want to learn Korean. And what better way than to do it with BTS? Yeah. So their their use of IP is my point is a little too much. Parasocial relationships to the max. Parasocial Level relationships pro max. are parasocialing. Like it's a Jesus. lot. It's a lot. Jesus. So that's Hive it's EDU. And they're going ham. They're creating all kinds of products. It's not just about like this type of learning. They're doing the cookbooks. They're doing yeah. the travel to Korea and go to every place BTS has gone to. And basically a lot of things that like fans were already doing, but now yeah. Hive is monetizing it. So always they're not not smart. No, they're evil geniuses. Mm. Literally. They also bought a gaming company in 2019 called Superb. Mm -hmm. They're known for a game called Pianista. And it's basically a classical music game a la garage band or guitar hero. So like there's classical music and then like you pretend you're playing it. Mm. It's a rhythm game. And the reason they bought this company was, again, to use their intellectual property. So with this company, they created a game called Rhythm Hybe, which is a rhythm game. And it has uh, the songs from BTS, TXT, 17, and then Hypen. And it actually has 4.4 stars on the Google Play Store, which I thought was pretty high. And this is not the only gaming company that they work with because they have the game BTS World, which was done in, in conjunction with Netmarble Corporation. And we all also have In the Sum or In the Island, which is the game that BTS dropped last year, on which I was dropping money and then I had to delete it from my phone because if not, I was going to keep spending money on this stupid fucking game they so, they really know how to get to us they know the way that they know we love cute things like now for this for the 10th anniversary they dropped new outfits that were modeled after what they looked like in 2013 which like none of them want to relive that but somehow some way they made it cute 
And now I want to download the game just so I can buy the stupid little outfits. I won't do it, but I want to. They're so cute. They're very cute. Moving on. The second way in which Hybe has become Hybe is through acquisitions and partnerships. So the first one happened, again, this is like a wobbly timeline. We'll go back and forth, but this is kind of like on an official level because like Hybe, Hybe established their Japan labels before in 2017. But that's not really a partnership. That's just like something that they opened. But this was kind of like the first partnership that they went for seriously with another company. So Hybe got together with CJENM. And you will hear this name again in the fifth episode of our series, which talks about the smaller companies. So the CJENM homies and Hybe opened Belift Lab in March of 2019, which is the company that yielded the island show so the cj and m people have a lot of experience with tv production so that's how island came to be and that's how Enhypen was formed publicly at least and yeah that's just a interesting little piece of information right there that again will come in handy in episode five so Enhypen is a south korean boy band formed by belief lab and which is a joint venture with cj and m and Hive Corporation through the 2020 survival competition show called Island. The group is composed of seven members who debuted in the same year to a lot of success because what Enhypen has done in the past two and a half, three years, literally mm-hmm. actually insane. Insane. My mm-hmm. son is also part of the group. Just wanted yeah. to throw it out there. Yes, Make, yes. Just in case anybody's wondering which one's my son. <laughs> Lots of people are wondering, Laura. That's how people do. They wonder about your sons. Then Source Music, again, we mentioned this at the very beginning because they were co-managing the groups 8 and Glam with Hive or Big Hit at the time. Source Music was established in 2009 by So Sung Jin, who actually worked at both SM and JYP Entertainment before starting Source Music. And then in 2019, the company was acquired by Hive, making the company part of the collective term Hive Labels. So you'll hear about this a lot about hype labels there's a bunch of some people like have a hard time understanding the whole like big hit hype umbrella of things and it's understandable why it's a complicated conversation but just know that all of the labels under hype are independent to an extent like they were acquired but they still operate independently and big hit did not become hype big hit music is still its own label as well so right. source music even though it was acquired it still operates independently when they were acquired by Hive, they were running a group called GFriend. But then once the completion of their six-year contract in 20, 2021 happened, all the members left the company. So the group was disbanded to the suffering and so I don't funny. even know what to call it because it was it was, it was bad. I was like new, was. new years to K-pop and I just know that everybody was like heartbroken when GFriend disbanded. So this is also a little slice of a controversy that, again, was not really on hype side, but exclusively on source music side. When the girls disbanded and the group kind of was broken up, source music used Google questionnaire to reimburse membership fees related to the, the dissolution of the GFRN group. And the personal information of 22 survey participants was compromised due to improper disclosure of survey results. So this led to on April 13th of 2022, the company was fined 3 million won by the Korea Personal Information Protection Commission. If you know anything about Korea and their privacy laws, you know they take that shit seriously. Like I read this and I was like, for 22 people? Like that that was it, but it's a lot. I have seen some of it in like a couple of K-dramas and I thought they were exaggerating, but no. And after G-Friend unfortunately disbanded, Source Music focused almost exclusively into launching Le Seraphim. So Le Seraphim started out as a six member group out of which two had already debuted in another group before called Eyes One, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So with Eyes One, what they were actually really successful and they, were. they just said that like their contract expired and they just let them go, which is wild because if they were so good, why would they just disintegrate it? Well, it it's kind of like they were made through a reality through show. Through a reality it's kind show, of like right. 101. They were also super successful, but everybody knew that after the two year contract, like that was going to be it the was end of over. It. Yeah. So 
it was kind of like that. Yeah. So fortunately, many of the members of Eyes One have found yeah. success elsewhere Thank because God. they are clearly really talented. Super. Very hungry for like making it. And two of them ended up on the Seraphim, one of them being uh, the leader, Kim Che Won, and the other one being Sakura. So they both signed with Source Music on March 14th of 2022. And then they debuted with La Seraphim literally less than two months later on May 2nd. So the other members of La Seraphim are Ha Yeonjin, Hong Eunche, and Kazua. And the sixth member had a controversy with bullying accusations. So when the group debuted, I think they started their like two weeks of promotions mm -hmm. at the very beginning. At that point, before they even debuted, there was already controversy with the with the bullying rumors, but they went ahead and still debuted them. Source Music and Hype at the time stood behind her. And then the accusations and the PR just got to be too bad. So they put her on hiatus while they investigated. And then about a month or a month and a half after they put her on hiatus, they decided to take her out of the group completely. And it's like she never existed in the first place. They, other than like the first music video, I guess, yeah, that she did it. with them, she's gone. So it's funny to me that Hive waited until they could separate any girl group from affecting BTS to debut a girl group. Because they've had a relationship with Source for a while, but it wasn't until they created the infrastructure of like high labels and like independent. And they're very adamant to say each la label is independent. Yeah. Um, that they finally said, okay, we can do a girl group. I think they literally waited until Bang PD stepped down because he was like, I don't want to touch a girl group with a million foot stick. Like he did not. He was not interested in that drama. And he was like, y'all better wait until you get a new CEO in here. And then y'all can deal with the bullshit of a girl group. And I'm sure that with the La Seraphim scandal, like two weeks in, he texted someone and was like, you see, this is why I didn't deal with Told the so. girls. So, yeah, it's very, very interesting that the timeline of them deciding to finally, you know, go with the girl groups and stuff. And the fact that the girl groups are not coming from big hit, they're coming from other labels. So, right. Never big hit. They never big hit. Why would you put TXT and BTS who have already a name established in possible like harm's scandals? way? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They're, they're doing what they need to do to protect they and are. secure the bag. They are. They are. Mm -hmm. Part of securing the bag was actually buying Pletus Entertainment in May 2020. Mm. They became a majority share shareholder in May 2020, but it wasn't approved by the KFTC until October 2020. So that took a little bit. And again, they keep saying independent, but they have the support, a financial support for the groups. And Pletus is home to 17 from his nine, Minhyuk and Baekhyo. And they were from a group called Newest that disbanded. And actually, I want to say that this was probably one of their, their best acquisitions because now with BTS not doing anything as a group, 17 has really stepped up as kind of not a replacement never a replacement and not a replacement not because of anything but because 17 is their own entity yeah and yeah. bts is their own entity i just yeah. want to make sure that that's clear i'm a character and an army and i know that they're very different but in a sense bts kind of left a hole yeah and a lot of bands have like come in to like fill that and 17 has been one of the more successful ones yeah and i think by the time that 17 has to start enlisting bts will be back right so it's like big hit and hive and pleas and all the companies are being st extremely strategic about timing here so that okay. they can all keep the money flowing and if it's complicated for you to think about the Hive structure, just think about it as like Hive is the bank and right. all the labels are just going to the bank to get their money and then they make their own decisions and whatever they need to do internally. So Hive is just there to give them money. That's it. And a sense of like... Yeah, backing protection. Legitness. Just yeah. because you're part of Hive now, it's like, oh, okay, that's a big deal sort yeah. of situation. Yeah. But if you notice also like whenever... Uh, 17 drops anything they always have the pletus logo in the okay. bottom whenever new jeans drops anything you have a door we haven't talked about them but we're going to in a second yeah so yeah. it's it's all there and the members when they were talking about renewing the contracts they were always talking about pletus and pletus executives not really high right another company that they acquired is cause 
Entertainment, and that was in November 2020. It is a entertainment company that was founded by Zico, the rapper, mm -hmm. and it is currently home to Zico. <laughs> TV, W, N, Don, maybe? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and most recently, Boy Next Door. It is a newly debuted boy group. And I love them, actually. Their Those music are strong really words for how recently they debuted. You know what? I don't love them, but I like their music okay. a lot. Okay. Eventually, I'll probably love them. They okay. look very cute. Yeah. I feel like these will be my babies. Okay. This next acquisition is, <laughs> I think, the biggest acquisition in the world. When this exploded or like when we found out the news, it was like our brains went like Michael Bay type of like explosions, you know, like yep, everywhere. In April 2021, Hybe bought out Ithaca Holdings, which if you guys don't know, is the company that was created by Scooter Braun. And underneath Ithaca Holdings were all of the other companies that he created because he had like a similar concept to mm -hmm. Hype. So they bought Ithaca Holdings and in the deal, Hype gained complete ownership while Scooter joined the executive board for Hype and kept the CEO title. At the very beginning, he was a he was co-CEO with the CEO of Hype, but about a year later, Scooter became the sole CEO of what is now Hype America. Ithaca Holdings became part of Hype America. What is Hype America? It literally has some of the biggest names in the international pop scene. <laughs> like <laughs> it has Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato, The Kid Laroi. CL outside of Korea, Psy, J Balbin for like Latin America. It's insane. With Hybe America and through Scooter Braun, they were actually able to buy quality control music recently, which mm -hmm. is the home to some of the bigger names in uh, hip hop right now, which include Migos, Lil Baby, Lil Yachty, Quavo. Literally through the process of acquiring Ithaca Holdings, I became one of the biggest entertainment, and they're not even an entertainment company at this point. They're mm -hmm. like an everything company in the world. Mm -hmm. I was, when I was doing a lot of research, like it blew my mind, the amount of artists that they were able to have under the wing with this box. By. like it's not just pop artists it's now hip-hop and rap artists it's country artists it's even korean artists like i didn't realize that Psy outside of korea was managed by now hive america wild wild one of the things i learned is all of these people are really mixed like we've been saying this like there is really no super clean cut of oh this company is this and this company is that like that doesn't exist mm -mm. it really doesn't exist it's a very small world in k-pop at the end of the day it it really and honestly at this point the whole world part of the lore or like what scooter braun and bang pd have sold to the media is that before the whole buying process started they actually started by having very personal conversations through zoom and they became best friends um and through that they were able to facilitate the buying of Ithaca Holding. Scooter actually visited South Korea um, while South Korea is very strict with uh, all of their quarantine laws and stuff. And like he spent a couple weeks there. He toured Hybe. He met the BTS members. It was like a whole thing. Bank PD says that Ithaca and Hybe were so, so similar in their management and in the vision that Scooter Braun had for Ithaca and what Bang PD wanted to do for Hybe, that it only made sense to become one, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't Kathy's favorite subject. Nope. Because as a lot of people, she doesn't like Scooter Braun. I don't. But I always tell her, and I'm like, Kathy, Bang PD and Scooter Braun are basically the same people. It's just one is 50 in Korean and the other one is 40 something in American. Like, <laughs> That's literally the only difference. I don't feel the same way. I don't think that there <laughs> is evidence to say that they are the same people based on business dealings. They're so, literally themselves saying they're the same people. 
No, they're saying their companies have very like mm. the same the same structure. They're not saying that they're the same people. Scooter, Scooter says that he's very inspired by Bank to become even more evil, like management of the world. We're not going to agree on this, Laura. It is what I, it is. You I, know what? You don't become the 16th most British. billionaire person in Korea by being nice. Like I get. I, I never said that Bank PD is the nicest little person ever. I just said he is not the same as Scooter Braun. That's my only argument. Always has been that, that he's not Scooter. Well, obviously, he's not the same person, but I really do think they're very similar. And that's the only reason why this partnership has worked. And he's able to retain his CEO status without like a really big problem. So sure. they're besties. Yeah. <laughs> whatever so listen some people <laughs> just have to be friends with evil people and that's that one thing that i guess is worthy to mention by the time hive america or hype core bought out ithaca to become high part of hive america scooter braun had already sold the masters? ownership the masters to taylor swift music so they do not own that just in case any Swifty or any person was wondering. And now that Bank PD has bought a gorgeous house in LA, they're probably going to be seeing each other more often. Yeah, with all my Weaver shipping fees. You know what I've noticed recently? What? what? The way Bank PD is posting way more and like more like doing things. And, and being always cool in people. English and being like... Right? my best right. friend and my thing mm -hmm. and my amazing producer and look at what's coming he's become very americanized like the fact that he dropped the picture of txt working with one republic with brian tedder i was like america really be changing people because it's korea angeles. could never la could... changes people it, it honestly <laughs> honestly <laughs> And his house is massive. I think it was like $26 million. Yeah, he bought it from like, Trevor Noah for like a million less than Trevor bought it for. So good job, Bank PD, on doing good business, I guess. Bank PD is so on track to be like an influencer that in his like post for TXT's concert, he totally posted about like a shoe brand or something. And it's not disclosed as like a brand par partnership or anything, but sir, you have a lot of influence. So you should be mindful disclosing or whatever, like why you're posting about the shoes. It's also funny to me that he stepped down as CEO of Hype and mm. he's chairman now that, you know, he stepped down to like really focus on music. And it's not to say he hasn't because he has been part of the producing teams for music for La Seraphim. And I think new jeans too. But like, homie, if you're focusing on music, what are you doing with all these business deals, my guy? Pick a lane. Well, no, Stick he can't pick story. a lane because he has Stick to take to over the world story. and be an evil overlord. So he has to do all the things, you know? He's an evil genius. Mm -hmm. And I am always in such awe of him and what he has been able to accomplish yeah. like, i feel like if i had 0.0002 percent of his brain girl i get so much shit done <laughs> right like i'd be he's... i'd be wow that that thought alone was like wow, wow. like I, I i know i call him an evil genius and that stuff but i really do admire just him as a businessman like mm. it's insane the fact that big hit started in 2005 and like here he is yeah owning he, half the he world. killed the big three literally like, killed the big three insane 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 yeah the vision i admire more than his business anything his vision like he very clearly knows what is good what people want and how to go about it and how to make it happen and he cut no corners to, you know, do it. Like he delivered the top product that he could at the time with what he had every single time. This feels like good usage of his aesthetic degree. It it does. It does. Look at like that. that. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of him for actually using his college degree in That's real life. Because can't really. Not all of us do. <laughs> can't really. Okay. Moving on. Before this big moment in high big hit history. Hybe had a partnership with Sony Music to distribute BTS music in the U.S. in February 2021. Hybe and Universal Music Group, UMG, announced a partnership. And what this partnership meant was that UMG artists would join Weavers. And in return, UMG would help with like not distributing the actual product but distributing bts as a group to like the western market yeah the western market the actual change in 
going from Sony to UMG happened later that year, um, by the end of 2021. So it all started kind of very small. And then by the end of the year, they had system going on that they could switch over to UMG being the distributor of BTS albums and music here in the U.S. Yeah. A part of that joint venture or that partnership was the creation of a joint venture label, which I couldn't find the name of because I don't think it still has a name. So it was a partnership between UMG, Geffen, and Hype America to create a new K-pop group. Originally, it was meant to be a boy group, but recently it changed to a girl group and they've been holding auditions for it. Another part of the partnership was YG, Hype, and UMG invested to create a company called V New Live, which is now called Weaver's Concert. And it's basically where Weaver's artists hold like online streaming concerts. So where if you're an army, you have caught the last couple of concerts being streamed online. So it's kind of like the direct competition to SM's Beyond Live. Mm. Uh, and that is it. yeah as a fan also because we might not notice things that change on mm. such a big level at the business but i'll say for example for us we noticed last year when bts dropped proof and when the solo project started at some point i think it was around proof we saw a tweet from umg saying like hey bts army sign up for this like mailing list and we all like, you know, brainless sheep just went and signed up for the list, not knowing what it was. <laughs> and it was just like a mailing list, you know, to let us know when like music was coming out. But then the thing is, when Jin and RM and Jimin and everyone has dropped their solo projects, now we get an email that it says like from RM and from Jin and from Sugar and from Jimin. And it's kind of a mindfuck to have an email from them in my mailbox that I know is not from them because I work in marketing. So I know how it works to you know, create a user or whatever. But those are like the biggest changes that I could say fans have seen in that transition from Sony Columbia to Universal. And then as far as outside of the acquisitions and the partnerships, there's been new label launches. Laura already covered Hive America. As I mentioned a little bit earlier about kind of going back and forth in a time warp, Hive Labels Japan was founded in September of 2017. And their current shining star are and team, which is a group that was formed through a survival show. They debuted in December of 2022 with nine mm -hmm. members and they got to meet J-Hope. And when he was around for like the award season, Scooter was there when the group basically <laughs> made it to the end. Because now, you know, they are going to be traveling on their private jet together to like show strength in their unity with, you know, Bang PD and Scooter and all the peoples. And then the other label that was created was Adore. It was founded in November of 2021. Adore stands for All Doors, One Room, because why not make everything in your life an acronym when you're, you know, a company of hive size? In July of 2019, Min Heejin. So we're not sure how we feel about her because there's like a lot of allegations and things being thrown around. We're not going to talk about it now, but just know that sus is the operating word here, but whatever. Capital letters. Mm. Min Heejin joined Hybe, then known as Big Hit, as their new chief brand officer. And then in November 2021, Hybe officially announced the establishment of Adore with Heejin as a CEO. And then in July of 2022, they hit us all in the face with new jeans, which came out of left field. We were we did not see it coming. It was just over two months after the Seraphim. And these girls came out with attention. All of Korea was in an actual literal chokehold. And then Hype Boy dropped. And then everybody forgot their names and their live identity and who they were. And to this day, it's been almost a year that, you know, people will just break into because I and the choreo and things and it's a lot so yeah. new jeans literally came for all of us and they and we are let we let them yeah fully they are just under a month away from their next comeback which will begin on july 7th with a pre-release very interested to see what they do because yeah. you know from july until december till january every song that they have dropped even the coca-cola commercial at this point has been huge has been it so yeah. whomever is 
l- like lacing new jeans's music with crack i would like to thank you and also not because you ruined my life but thank same, you same same they have come out with one very questionable song and that's the reason why we're not quite sure how we feel about the ceo it's leaning towards ick inappropriate ill yeah. rose who are you why are you doing this chancla to the face um <laughs> very that and then finally they just created another japanese label called neko it is ocean spell backwards mm, so creative <laughs> right and that this was just created in december of 2022 so it's a baby it's a little company mm. uh, i believe it only has one artist signed up right now and there really isn't much to it so now we got to section three the last section of this long long ass an insufferable episode truly we're sorry but you know we had to do it so we are in the section of hype is in their expansion global domination era like 2019 to 2022 set the stage and mm-hmm. now they're moving the chess pieces to really make their intergalactic hit on <laughs> all of us because that's what's happening We won't even see it coming, except we do, but we're pretending that we don't because there's just so much music coming at us in every direction that we just don't even know what's happening anymore. So yeah, we cannot get into too much detail here because this can be an episode in itself. And it might be depending if you guys want it, let us know. Maybe. But we have to talk a tiny little bit about the SM acquisition situation that happened just a few months ago. We're going to talk about it primarily for one reason, and it's a technology aspect. But bear with me as I kind of summarize what happened during that whole ordeal. So let's talk about the SM and Hive T that developed in February of 2023. If you don't know, SM Entertainment was founded by Isuman. And recently, he had a fallout with the current management, or not current anymore, which included his ex-CEO, nephew, Chris Lee. At the time, Lee Suman was SM's biggest shareholder. He had 18% of SM stock. And then SM's management, out of nowhere in February, decided to announce a $173 million share sale deal with Cacao. But the thing is, Chris Lee... And the management didn't realize that this was against their own bylaws because you cannot offer shares to an outside buyer before offering it to the current shareholders, which would include his uncle. And then his uncle did what no one ever thought he was going to do, which was to call Bank PD and be like, hey, do you want to buy my shares and become the biggest shareholder of SM? And Bank PD was like, yo, I'm not going to lie. That's a that's a. That's a lot. He actually went against his mentors. Yes. Like, like he, he had to think about it. He had to like retreat into like solitude and meditate and have, I don't know, a lot of thoughts and prayers, you know, and he did consult with people that were trusted to him and they all told him, don't do it. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to follow my gut and I'm going to do it. So Hive moved forward with buying 14.8% of the shares Isuman had. And right when things were about to like escalate towards where Hive was going to be the top dog at SM, Cacao said, listen, bitch, we get it. Y'all got money, but guess what? We're chibbles over here. We own everything. We, if you think you have money, this is about to become the pissing contest of the century. So Hive was cute. And they were like, okay, guys, we promise that we're going to buy. 25% 25% of SM for 120,000 won a share. And Kakao was like, that's cute, but I'm going to buy 35% for 150,000 won a share. And so Hybe was like, okay, you know what? We got like shit to focus on, like BTS and 17 and, and things in that. And we're acquiring people in Hive America and people here and the labels and weavers. And we got our hands on too many pots and we're not going to win this battle. So, you know, what? we're going to bow out gracefully. But first, Bestie, Cacao, now that we're talking, let's have a deal. So you get to keep all of SM. You won't even notice that we're here. We're just going to keep a tiny little share. And you guys are going to give us the technology component, a.k.a. a little known company called Dear You. Dear You just so happens is the company that created Bubble. 
if you are an SM or JYP girly, I mean, like you like the groups in those companies, you might right. be a bubble user. So if you use bubble, you know that this is a paid service where you get to interact with the artists that you like, and it's kind of personalized because they somehow with the software make the YN moment a reality with your name in the game. So Basically, after all the dimes y diretes between Cacao and Hive, Cacao said, okay, we already have Cacao Talk. I don't need to compete with you in communication. Here, take it. You got Dear You. Here's the thing, though. Dear You had already acquired this other little app called Universe, where there were 80s, Gravity, Monster X, Astro, a bunch of other groups were there. So Universe collapsed in January of 2023. It had only been around for two years when Bubble absorbed it. And they were like, oh, you know, we're going to have all the artists that we're using Universe are going to go to Bubble. Except some of them were like, no, we're not. And we're going to talk about that on the fifth episode. Again, y'all have to come back for the fifth episode because it's going to be piping hot tea. So this is the thing. You remember earlier when Laura said that the FTC allowed the <laughs> VLive and... Weavers <laughs> joined venture because there were still a lot of apps in the market and there was a lot of competition. Well, that's not the case anymore. So it seems it seems that dates have been set and things have been agreed upon because now Hive is truly like the monopoly owner of communication. <laughs> within fans like the fan experience the fan engagement platform experience in south korea hive is fully in control right now so they're saying that in september of 2023 artists who have bubble are going to be on weavers they're still going to keep bubble for the dm component they're not going to jump into weavers dm right away for now but you know they're gonna like at some point yeah collapse and bring all the things together into one because why are we going to have multiple services unless you they want to keep pretending with yourself correct so mm. there goes that kftc people Crazy. Uh, i mean no one would have ever thought that isuman was going to sell his share to bank pd like right. never that was that was on nobody's bingo's card like ever and this is such a big thing for hyde and one of the bigger things that they've been trying to focus outside from world domination is the fan artist interactions. Like that's one of the biggest things that made or allowed Hybe to become Hybe because I don't think anybody was doing it like BTS was doing it in terms mm -hmm. of fan interactions um, when they were still like coming up. Mm -hmm. So it's insane that like this is the culmination of all that hard work, total yes, domination is. of everything. My yeah. God, so fucking smart. Honestly. It's it's literally Genius. the best possible outcome because <laughs> there was there was resistance both from its from from SM and from Hive internally. They did not yeah. want the deal with SM to go through. So Bang had to deal with a lot of people telling him that this wasn't right, but it ended up working out beautifully for him. Cause then they were able to sell 44% of what they had bought. Back to cacao. 87 million they made out of that. 87 million dollars. They, they made got out their of those money. 44%. They got to keep the technology component. They uh, don't have to worry about most of what goes on in SM. Which is or a do lot. they? Because, you know, some tea has come out recently and it just so Jesus happened Christ. that it's after Hive joined the chat. So we don't know, but we're not going to sit here and conspire. We're just going to bring you the facts today. So anyway, Weavers. Uh, and Bubble and Universe are all into one little package right now. And at the end of the day, Hybe is getting access to a team of developers that they didn't have before with Bubble. So they know that they're going to make Weavers DM the best thing out there. Better, right? And, you know, they're going to have a lot of people working on these projects and they're going to end up enticing all of us who said, fuck this, never. I don't want to pay for this. We're going to end up paying for this. Because people have never complained that Bubble is a sucky app. They complain about having to pay for it, but never that, oh, it's like the worst. It's more like, fuck, I have to pay for this if yeah. I want to be part and not have FOMO. And FYI, just because I said bubble, you know, like mostly for SM and, J and JYP artists, they actually have 66 other entertainment agencies like linked to them that they're using. So when That's we crazy. say like all of Korea, we mean all of Korea. And again, there's a bunch of Western artists that are already on Weavers. 
So they're just going to have every use case possible to entice mm -hmm. every artist alive to come use Weavers for their fan interactions. It's it is crazy. truly a mastermind, like chess move that this whole thing unleashed. So and yeah, it's a Weavers... subscription. So like it's money coming in on a monthly basis. Yeah. Yeah. So Same. they have Weavers. They have the Weaver shop. They're going to have Weavers Plus which is going to be the paid side so that if you, if you don't want to get ads, if you want to get live translations, and if you want to oh. get a couple of other things, you're going to pay for it. They're going to have Weaver's DM so you can talk to your idols or think that you're talking to your idols, really. And yeah, like that's what makes Weaver's right now before even like the bubble acquisition or the DRU anything already has the number one platform in Korea with currently 53.9 million subscribers at the end of 2022. Jesus. Just imagine what that number is going to be at the end of this year with the acquisition of the DRU situation. Oh my God. It's a lot, guys. Oh it's a lot. We said this episode was going to be a lot. We meant it. Oh my Sorry goodness. for telling you the That's truth. That's insane. That's insane. I know. Another insane thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which you could call a mini scandal, but also part of their expansion into worldwide domination. Recently, if you guys try to get tickets for TXT and Sugar in the U.S., you mm -hmm. might have noticed that there was a thing in Ticketmaster, dynamic pricing. It is our the literally the thing devil. of our existences. Yeah. Like, it's just gross. You might have seen that that was a thing. And the reason why, and this is coming from the horse's mouth, yeah. there is actually recordings of a Hive employee giving a presentation on this is because they are trying to maximize their profits in the U.S. and in the international market as much as they can. So from what I understood, basically moving forward, if they can apply dynamic pricing, they will apply dynamic pricing. And if something like and if dynamic pricing doesn't exist, they will do something similar. So they brought up a point where like in Japan, it's not a thing, dynamic pricing, but they do have very segmented seating which can be sold at very different price points because of the way that they're built. And so they will be doing that because they want all of our money. And if you want to know and understand more about dynamic pricing, we did put out an episode on Ticketmaster a couple of months ago. And during that episode, we were very clear and we said with our whole chest that Hyde could choose and would choose to use dynamic pricing. And, and like no one really understood the message. But then once Hyde came out and said it with their own full chest that yeah we turn it on for sugar and we turn it on for txc and we're gonna keep doing it because we want to make the most money possible all the fans were outraged and were like what the fuck definitely you would have known if you were listening to our podcast but just saying that you can mm -hmm. have that information still and a lot of intern like a lot of people that weren't in the u.s or aren't u.s fans were saying that the u.s fans deserve it because of the way that some u.s fans defend hive on everything they do but as a little moment of just making sure that our deluluness is back to like a normal level we have to remind ourselves that hive is a corporation and the purpose of a corporation is to make money yeah they have created a lot of systems that make you believe as a fan that they do care about us or us as like a very personal or like seemingly personal level but they're a corporation they're a job and in the end they're just trying to make the most profit for the shareholders yeah they and do care about us because if they lose us they have nothing but, but not in the way that like some fans that are a little bit too invested or younger or just don't know any naive. better not in that way right and in the end like even with the whole 17 light stick fiasco or like People are like, oh, no, um, don't buy it. Like, we have to show them we don't like it. People like me, traders, actually bought it anyway. So there will always be people that buy or fall for it or choose to go for it, regardless of whether it's wrong or right, because they yeah. want to see the artist and that's that. Fans will have to find ways to unionize to make sure that people are all, like, adhering by something so we can actually speak with our pockets, right. because as much as we screened about the sugar tickets, we bought them anyway. So, right. Yeah, we we're not helping ourselves, that. really. And then the last two things that we'll mention as part of Hybe's global domination 
track. Number one is the NFT fail situation that they had, which I guess is not that big of a fail. It's just, you know, minor setbacks. So mm -hmm. in November of 2021, Hive announced that there was some sort of NFT project coming. And I guess they didn't read the room because ARMY was <laughs> not having it. ARMY <laughs> said, listen, bitch, we are like a lot of Gen Z people here and BTS in general has schooled all of us into caring for things and standing up against the system. And so we're telling you that you're wrong because NFTs are terrible for the environment and horrible sustainability practices and all of these things. So ARMY screamed so much and so aggressively against NFTs that like Bang PD had to address it uh, himself in an interview and was like, guys, we haven't even announced anything, but okay, noted. And then right after project was kind of pulled back, it did end up coming out later, but BTS was not included in that project. And it seems from some reports that it had a lot to do with the fact that RM himself stepped in and gave a presentation to presumably Bank PD and maybe a few other executives about why it was a bad idea for BTS to do the NFT project. Like basically he said, the ROI is not good here. Like you're going to make some money, but the optics are going to be so bad that it's going to affect us negatively more than any money that we can make off of this. So because of that, BTS was not included in the NFT project. And then Pi pretended that they never said NFT ever. And then they were like, guys, guess what, bestie? We have this thing called Momentica, where you're going to get a digital token that you're going to get to preserve. But get they basically bamboozled the fans coming out with this digital thing. They never said NFT on the website anywhere on the announcements or anything. So like a lot of the fans that don't really do the research or don't really look like too deep into it, didn't even realize that they're still doing the NFT thing just with a different name. And then again, BTS was not included, but they did do it for 17, TXT, Promise 9, Les Arafim, and then Hypen. So major players at Hive are all in the Momentica thing. Is that still a thing? Like people are still buying these things? So as of the November 2022 Hive briefing, they had yeah. like the promise members give interviews and they were recording things that are you being used for the momentica because it's not just images but they have like uh, voice things and whatever so okay. i went on the website literally today before we recorded and they have like new posts coming in so yes it's oh, still wow. very interesting i don't know who's paying for it i don't know who's into it there's Me also so. like a whole separate conversation about last year we saw that like ticketmaster with some events are basically selling you like in in the ticket price they include like a digital memorabilia or a digital keepsake and it's basically okay. an nft that Ooh. is like it, it comes with your ticket like you couldn't do anything about it i didn't see it for hype groups i saw it for jyp groups so Ooh. we don't know how this can spin but like if they will find a way to spin it they will they will they will do it yeah for sure and then last 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 the second thing that i named as a final kind of cornerstone so far as of june early june of 2023 wow. of hybe's world domination situation is supertone supertone is company technology that can clone voice completely not just tone but also intonation so for example they can record my voice and then put Angelina Jolie's intonation or her speech and make it into a completely different voice. This technology can also replicate the character of a person in any language. You can make the voice older or younger. So when they said this, I, I, it was Bang PD. I think he gave an interview to Billboard around three months ago when this first came out that he started saying that he basically, his theory is that human artists are not going to be able to fulfill the needs of fans for much longer like fans are just going to be looking for other things and so they're trying to get ahead of the game in terms of like what ai can help them do and so about a month ago they started releasing these teasers for this new project called midnap and like <laughs> i remember 
some of the Delulus on TikTok or Twitter were saying like, I think that's Jungkook. Like when they saw like a shape of someone and I'm just like, bro, the clown masks no, that not. y'all are just like on right now. Because remember when we mentioned the artists that are under Big Hit and they had Ehan, who is their solo artist, <laughs> he is Midnight. So he came out and he changed his image basically and had this whole like alter ego persona right now <laughs> as Midnight. And they released a song called Masquerade in six different languages. And that was done using his voice. And he didn't sing in all those languages. That's all done through AI. So crazy. I think this is obviously like brilliant by many standards. Yeah. I personally do not subscribe to this. I think it's, it's like creepy. I'm being a boomer about it, but it's like scary times to me personally. Sweet. I think it was very smart to do it with Ehan first. Yeah, because I think he's a very well liked person by South Koreans. He does, you know, ballads, OSTs like he has a pretty good, nice, clean image. So by having someone like him be the face of this project, it kind of lowers everyone's guards. It's not right. someone new that they don't know. It's it's someone that they have already established some sort of trust with. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they, they're going That's about crazy. this in a very That's clever crazy. way i hate it here i truly hate it here but You're genius you know you gotta respect the game you know don't don't hate the or don't hate the player hate the game kind of thing yeah i don't know what to say i'm just out here observing and panicking it's very much the difference in appearance between bank pd jyp and yg the man it's it's giving very much using this man who is treated like BTS, BTS's uncle. Yeah. Or like big brother. Mm. And uh, that's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah, no, yes. it's, it's playing yes. on Everything. safety, safety. It's like yeah. I, y y trust. It's playing on a lot of things. And, you know, I, I guess also I, I do feel some sort of happiness for Ehun, I guess, in like some revival of his career in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. He never, like, I can only imagine being in the same company as BTS and not even making, like, 1% of what they do. So, or TXT, too. Now. Or TXT, too. Like, yeah, it has to be, like, mind-blowing to be around these giants, all, everyone who's taller than you. And <sighs> you are yeah. so supremely talented with a voice of an actual angel. And, yeah. yeah, you know, there's only so much that you can do because you don't fit the mold of an idol. Right. So, I guess, in that sense, I do feel hopeful for him to like have like enjoy this revival the the whole look change that they did on him was a little crazy to me they were it, it was giving like you know makeover for the uncle like the what not to wear like they call what not to wear <laughs> and they were like we're gonna throw all your clothes away and we're gonna style your hair differently they dyed his hair gave him facial hair like it was a whole thing. And I'm like, okay, I see it's you. It's giving, hi. hey, fellow kids. Yeah. <laughs> very much giving that. So, yeah. In conclusion. Worldwide domination. <laughs> like, gird your loins. Hide your wives. Hide your kids. Because. Hide your wallet, most importantly. Hide because everything. I've is coming for you. Yes, they are. And you will have no choice but to give them all your money. Yeah. You and you'll, will you'll come fall. to them. You will fall too deep and you won't know and you won't be able well, to hold back anymore. Financial mm -hmm. responsibility. Who is she? Don't know. I don't her. know. Mm -mm. Don't know her. I was so, never taught that in college. We were wondering today, talking in general about this episode, and we don't know what's coming. No one, the, the future is not certain. Hive may be on top today, maybe not there tomorrow. We don't know. No one knows. But I, I do think it's worth asking the question of whether this world domination hunger and thirst that they have and greed because that's what it is at the end greed. of the day yeah will play to their favor or their demise if they go too far if we go by greek mythology <laughs> if you try to fly too close to the sun you burn you're gonna like fall. icarus yeah so yeah. and the fans notice Oops. you know the the fans the fans not always not everyone not all the time not a lot but a lot of fans are smart and yeah. they notice things right away and they really do love the groups especially right. bts bts has reached levels that no other band or musical act mm -hmm. 
has ever reached. And those are good things, obviously, for the company. Right. But then fans also feel extremely protective. And if they feel like they've been deceived by something that meant so much to them, things can turn really quickly. So that's very true. We're going to see what happens. Hive definitely has diversified their income. They're definitely not putting all their eggs in one basket. They have multiple baskets with multiple chickens laying eggs at all times. So we'll see. We'll see what comes. We are a little scared, but also Hive hire us because I mean, Bank PD, I'm available. My parents won't mind. I swear. Adoption, like <laughs> jobs. We, we, we do admire the hustle and me too also check out boy next door (laughs) (laughs) anyway we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we hope that you didn't like hate us for talking so much but really like we couldn't summarize any more than we did and we will be back next week with another light episode to be in between and Mm. then we are coming back with the SM. So stay tuned. And then two weeks after that, we will have our final episode in this series, which will be covering a lot of small companies. Or are they small? And mm-hmm. other questions like that. If there's anything from today's episode that you want to know more about or you want us to drop uh, an episode on, just let us know. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the MIA2K podcast. We have lots of great content coming up ahead. So please don't forget to follow and subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you enjoyed our episodes, please rate us five stars. And for the real time tea, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook by searching for at MIA2K Podcast. Dale. Bye.